Okay, so it's been a long time since I've recorded a video um, about intelligent design, and I thought I'd do one today for a few reasons. Firstly, I bought a new microphone, so hopefully this will sound better. Um, I've realized today I should have also bought a microphone stand because I can't put the microphone as close to my mouth as I'd like. Um, so sorry if it feels a bit distant, it might sound like I'm sitting on the other side of the room, but this is as close as I can get with my current setup, so that's something I'm gonna improve. And the second reason is that I've made quite a few updates to the game, and I wanna just explain a few things that probably aren't explained very well in the tutorial, because obviously this is early access, and I'm gonna be adding those things more um, and counting that as like polish, really. So one of the first new things since my last video is this main menu. Now, I'm using an Xbox 360 controller, the Xbox One controller currently isn't working, um, but you can use keyboard and mouse. So there are three cubicles that you can select in this main menu, and these are basically safe slots. Um, in the future, well, there, there are differences between all three of these slots. So when you start a game, there are some subtle differences, some of them not so subtle. So for example, cubicle 384 is a different map um, and cubicle 484 will also be a different map eventually, but isn't right now. So let's select the first save slot now. Um, you can now on this screen change your name in the text box that's there, um, and that will update your name on the high score table. Um, you won't lose anything previously. Uh, that's absolutely, you know, you can just change your name. It's just a, a name associated with your account. So I'm going to start a new game and um, show you some of the new features. Now, when the game starts, there'll be a tutorial playing, but I'll skip that. Okay, right, so I'm gonna skip that. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is, while I'm explaining things, I'm gonna build a collector, um, and that can start collecting us some biomass, which we're gonna need for um, some, of our, some of the other features. Um, so, okay, let's go start up the top left. Now I can select options with a D-pad on the Xbox controller and then I'm using the control sticks to move around and the two triggers to go up and down. Um, navigate with D-pad and then I push A to select an option. Now you can um, invert the camera if you prefer it that way. So you can just push this button and it inverts. And there's a mute audio and then you've got your save load here. Um, and if you want to reset the tutorial, you can click this and it will start the tutorial again uh, from the start. And I'm going to improve the tutorial a lot. I'm not happy with how it is at the moment. Um, also, I've put the save data location there. Um, there are some XML files that are saved um, by the game. So you, there are currently now, if you select the graphs, um, the game is constantly recording data. And not only is that graph shown here, you can go to that folder and you can get the XML data and put it into Excel or something and draw your own graphs um, if you want to. Okay, so let's start here. The main thing you're gonna be doing in this game is creating plants, herbivores and carnivores. So clicking random plants does exactly what you expect it to. It creates a species of plants. So each one of these drops a bunch of seeds and you can see those falling down. Each set of seeds here has the same genes. So the, these, this group has the same genes which are different to this group. And those genes determine a bunch of stuff to do with that plant, how it behaves, um, how it grows, how it sends its seeds away, how often it sends seeds away, how survivable it is, all this kind of stuff. And that's kind of the main part of the game. Is that's, that's a big thing in the game, is, is these genes. So random herbivores will do the same, and so would random carnivores. But I'm not going to do that right now, because if I bring in herbivores now, these plants aren't established. They're going to get eaten really quickly. So there are a bunch of buildings you can build as well. Um, the collector, which is a building I've already built, this one here. The main job of this building is to bring you, give you an income, which you can see the biomass is going up in the top left corner. 
and it's what that's actually what this thing is doing is there is a range around it where it is sucking like moisture out of the air. And that's the same moisture that the plants use. Um, I'm going to build some more plants as we're talking. It's the same moisture the plants use, and there's a climate model in the game, um, which means things like humidity and wind change over time. So you can see in the bottom right there, the blue is the humidity. So you're going to get more biomass, more money. Um, I'm going to turn tooltips off. Um, more money if the climate's doing better. So that's one way. That's one way this collects your money. The other way is it literally sucks it out of plants nearby. So that's which is why I'm trying to build all these plants because the more plants that are around it, the more money that we're going to make. Now, the problem with that is it's sucking the biomass, which is basically the life out of the plants around it. So these plants are going to find it harder than plants that say over here, because this collector is literally taking energy from them. And so that's a balance that you're going to have to come to in your game is how many of these things do you build? So I'm going to explain this building now. This is the radar. And if you notice my cursor, as I move away, it will turn red. That means I'm out of range of a radar, which means I can't build things. So these are quite expensive. Uh, but what these will do is expand where you can build things, where you can drop in plants and various other things. They also have another function. If you mouse over or you, you look at it, it says toggle force field. If you go to that, it turns on this big force field and animals and seeds can't pass through here. Um, now seeds might get blown over here by the wind, um, but generally this is a way of you to maybe contain an area if you don't want things to move out. See, this, this the world is reasonably big. Um, the second map is even bigger. You might want to keep everything in the same place. Uh, but I'm going to turn this off for now. So the question is, why do you care about money? Other than to build these radar towers um, to expand your influence. Well, there's also these things called research stations. And what the research stations do is they generate you generate science. If we click on the science tab up here, we'll see the science system. Now, when I place a research station, there'll be a range around it in which it can investigate either plants, herbivores or carnivores. And at a given rate, it's going to generate science for whatever it can see nearby. So if it sees plants, it can generate science for plants. If it sees herbivores, it can generate science for herbivores and carnivores the same. As you generate the science, you um, you unlock ability. So you, you will, down the bottom it says at the moment I've got naught plant unlocks. That means I haven't got anything to spend. But if that said one plant unlock, I could click that button and then I'd have, that's basically spending an unlock. And then if you go to the unlocks tab, this is where that would appear. Now what these unlocks do is that they give you information about the specific genes that all these things have inside them. And it allows you to change them. So if we had an unlock for plants, it might tell us what one of the genes means. And we could ch move the slider that you can see on the screen and change what the maximum value that gene would take in a mutation, for example, or when you create a new species of plants or herbivores or carnivores. And that should help you create a better ecosystem, which in turn will help you make, you know, generate more science because you've got more population going around. And that's kind of like the, the loop I'm trying to go for is, is that you're trying to generate to make an ecosystem that's stable so you can research more, so you can make a more stable ecosystem. So I'll build a research station here. So this is what they look like. Um, and so this is going to be generating, if I get the science tab up, um, you can see we've got one plant science because at the moment, it was all the, the only things that are around there, here are plants. So if you're interested in like kind of the background of, of what's going on behind the scenes, is that this is counting all the plants around it 
it's multiplying that number by your plant level in the top right. Now you increase that level by how many plants are born. So that's 77 out of 80, that's how many plants have been born, not created by me, but actually born in the wild. So you take the number of plants surrounding it times that level, that's multiplied by the rate that this um, particular station can upgrade or can generate science at. And then that's what's added to your total. And you can increase the rate by upgrading these. So if you look, you, if I look at this cursor, I can see that the next upgrade is going to cost me 1,259 biomass to make. But that will double the rate of science and it will increase the range as well. So it will count more plants, it will be able to do more science. The science also gives you biomass. So I've unlocked 24 plant signs, which means I've already got 24 extra biomass from this research station. Now you have to ask your question this, ask yourself this, this question. Do you build lots of research stations or do you build lots of collectors? Or do you try and find a nice balance between the two? The more of these things you build, the price will keep increasing as you build them. And the price of the upgrades will also increase. And that's kind of what the game is at the moment. It's a bit like a game like Cookie Clicker um, or Adventure Capitalist, that kind of thing, where you're trying to make this science factory a really efficient way of generating science. And then using these unlocks to control your ecosystem more. And I've had some players have, have been, uh, some people playing the game have already unlocked these and, and, and found some really weird stuff happens if you mess with those. Um, I haven't put any kind of anything in there to stop you breaking the game, not breaking the game in the way of crashing, but you, you could break the game by making some crazy super animal or super herbivore that just eats all the plants quickly. And if you introduce that into your ecosystem, then it's going to be really hard to get rid of it. It's a lot like the worry people have of gen genetically modified crops, yeah? So if you start doing genetic modification, you can't go back in time and get rid of that. Um, so yeah. Okay, so that was quite a quick overview. Um, well, it's an overview and I also want to trust my microphone out. So I hope that explains a few things to you. Um, so there's a download link on my YouTube channel where you can go download the game. Um, yeah, so enjoy it and let me know what you think. Um, I'd love to see like screenshots or if you do some cool data visualization with this, um, with those XML files, I'd love to see that. If you mess around with the genes, like what does that do? I don't even know what that's going to do. Um, which is, I think why, why I'm finding this quite interesting. Okay. Thanks for watching. Um, and don't forget, download it, give it a try. Let me know what you think.